is uh, six o'clock. Thank you all for coming. Um, might we begin with members who have interests to declare? Except from the interests you've already regularly declared. Um, might I ask for um, apologies, please? Um, apologies so far. Any other apologies? Very good. Um, could you retake then the minutes of the last meeting? Is, does anybody want to dispute any of the items, the, the record that was made of our last meeting? Could I, could I accept, can I sign on this correct record? Very good. Could we then, I think, go to the next item is the apologies, isn't it? Yeah, sorry. Can we actually ask Maury to introduce themselves and take us through uh, this, uh, the results of this exercise that the council undertook for the whole of the world, but broken down as well for constituencies, and what you found. Thank you very much. Okay. Where do you want me to check? Do you want to start over there? Do you want to do it easier? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, in fact, I think we're going to... Kevin, what's your name? I think with this table, we have to turn the chairs around. You're going to speak in this hour? Size of the population, the uh, demographics, uh, economic profile, things like that. 
We have a benchmark against four of them, and that body did their research as well. Now, two of them are anonymous, so they're called Tantal A Council B in the detailed report. Two, the other two are involved in South End, obviously. What we're doing now, and we're working with the LGA at the moment, is uploading this to what's called LG Inform, which is kind of an online database that compares us against the rest of the country. Effectively, that'll be available in, in a month or so, I think, based on their timelines. Great. Okay, so, as I said, this is just overall snapshot of the entire, of the entire feedback, and you already know this anyway, but big differences between constituencies in terms of the makeup of the constituency. In Wallasey, we tend to be getting more long term sick and disabled. In Widow West, as you're not, more, home, more homeowners, more retirees. Widow South, more homeowners, more healthy and higher employment, which is a bit of a theme that you'll see through. What I've tried to do is, as much as possible, is personalise this, uh, this presentation. Um, so, as you'll see in the top right, fair compared, more social and private tenants, less healthy or higher employment, all of which you'll know. Uh, but that's, that's the, this is the, exactly the data that Molly gave us. Now, what this is, this next slide, is this is issues that, that people feel most need improving. Now, these aren't, I'm going to get into the big priorities in a second. What these are that I'm going to show you now, and they should be there, there they are, um, is where SIFT specific issues are an outlier from the rest of the bullet. So, where there's a particular theme in the constituency that's not a theme in, in another area, effectively, an outlier really, some kind of anomaly. So, we want to see job prospects and good access to shops. Um, in Middle West, traffic congestion, which is surprising, but that came out as an issue in Middle West, where it didn't come out of investment work. Middle South, all well, the paper repairs. Bacon heads got the biggest lift, um, as you see there. Crime and social behaviour, jobs, housing, support for the vulnerable, community activities, high school private events. They were all coming out as issues in Bacon Head, not necessarily in the other areas, which, which was generally the biggest, the biggest lift. So they're, they're, they're the, the priorities for the in terms of this, this slide, unfortunately, is worldwide. Um, what's most important to make a good, uh, somewhere a good place to live? What are the, what are the main, what are the most important factors affecting a person's quality of life? And this, these are the four broad topics that came out from, from the entire, from the entire population. Now, <coughs> low-level crime and social behaviour and clean environment generally come out top um, across the country, coming out top here. And um, when we get into crime and ASP and the environment in a second. Good education, according to Molly, very rarely comes out in the top three. It's come out in the top three in Willow. Um, and good health services. And again, there's a constituency profile to that, which I'll talk about in a second. But then, in terms of the most important factors affecting the residents' quality of life, they're top four. Guess what? What we've got here, and that's quite difficult to read, I apologise for that, but I will circulate these slides. What I've compared is Will, uh, will Wide against Birmingham specifically, just to show where there's any differences. <coughs> so these are basically the top five factors that are affected, that are contributing towards some of these quality of life. So on the left hand side is Will, on the right hand side Birmingham. So you'll see the top one of both areas is low levels of crime and antisocial behaviour. That's most important to people. In Will, number two, streets and environment are kept clean. That changes in Birmingham, that drops to number four in Birmingham. So they're broadly in line, what they move around a little bit. The top five are the same, but there's, there's a different ranking across Bayern and Head that's the best that there is in the rest of the world. So I jump in to what most needs improving, which I suppose is, is almost more important in this kind of context. Um, exactly the same top five across Bayern and Head, in Bayern and Head as in Will. Road and pavements, streets and environments, public realm, effectively. And then I would I'd possibly suggest, although we need an instant data, that the next two are linked. Teenagers have access to events and facilities, low levels of crime, and antisocial behaviour. I would imagine, in terms of perception, <coughs> those two things might be linked. Last one. So, effectively, what you've got is public development, crime and safety, and the economy are the top five. Are the, are the, are the top five. They're, 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 as a combination, and there's no difference. There, there's differences, slight differences in numbers, but the ranking remains the same from being ahead to winning as a whole. Highest priorities. Um, what we ask people to do, um, generally during this, during this survey and this research programme, we talk about outcomes. So if you look at that slide and jump back, they're generally kind of outcome type language. What we also ask people to do is look at what services the council actually provide at the moment and almost give us a ranking. What's most important to you, what's least important to you. Um, again, same thing, I've split the will against Bird and Head. And again, it's relatively, it's rel relatively similar, there's just different, there's just different um, ordering where support for the vulnerable jumps up to number two in Birmingham, and to number four in the rest of the world. And 
and say this is for children and young people, in Ben Ed appears in the top five, doesn't when you look at the entire plan. That is, that's a specific theme within Ben Ed constituency. But generally, the, the, the broad area of reducing crime and ESP, public realm activity, is, seems to be the general theme. If I move um, into now what the, the, the reverse of this, which is the lowest priority, uh, again, the bottom four, uh, what people are saying are, are their lowest priorities, which isn't to say that people don't think they're important, because they do. Um, if you look, for instance, in parks, they, I haven't got this data in, in this presentation, but nine out of ten rural residents have used the park in the last, in the last year. I've used and enjoyed the park. They are absolutely valued. This is almost a um, if push comes to shove type list. What, if, if, you, if you only have a one pound left, where would you put it? It's that kind, it's that kind of list, so it's an absolute priority. So the bottom four are the same, uh, whereas what the worldwide wide um, housing comes in the bottom five and doesn't in better than No, so, but couldn't that also be interpreted um, that in fact the present um, facilities, the libraries, road safety, parks and sports, you could think are adequate? It could, it could, yeah. But in, in the context of this question, it's what you, it, it, could, it could absolutely be considered like that. That they don't, that they don't think it's a real priority for improvement. Because they're yeah. happy with the set up. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. Particularly when you consider that when 9 out of 10 people have actually used the park. Yeah, generally. The way the question was phrased, though, was asking for priorities. But it's, well, yeah, it, 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 you could interpret it like that, absolutely. This is antisocial behaviour. Now, what I'll go through here, this is a whole different series of different aspects of, of what's considered antisocial behaviour. The blue bar is Birkenhead, the red bar is the rest of the world, and this is asking people whether they think it is a problem in their area. Um, what you'll see is that in every area, it's, people are saying that it's more of a problem in Birkenhead than the rest of the world. Um, where that, I think, is most prevalent is if you look against drug use, drug use is people, take, people use and taking drugs. Um, six in ten people in Birkenhead are saying that that's a problem in their area, compared to just under four in ten in the rest of the world. Um, what you've got to consider this is that is, this is absolutely what we're asking for here is how people feel. It's a, it's a perception, but that you'll see a general trend there across Birkenhead. Um, dog fouling, massive problem, um, but it's the same, that seems to be relatively simple. There's a 10% to 9% differential between Birkenhead and Will on the slide. That, in terms of worldwide figures, that's our biggest issue in terms of antisocial behaviour. But the biggest difference between us and the rest of the world are three things, aren't they, Mark? Drugs, drink, and neighbours. Well, yeah. Is our most marked. Yeah. 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 So what is, as I said earlier on, there's, there's already the, the most important thing about get, when we get this data is actually being like, it's actually put acting on. It's absolutely about acting. Start taking actual action to, ask, to start moving these things now. That's, what, that's why we did this research so we could actually understand exactly what the actual issues were that we needed to tackle and then we've got a response. This next slide is basically almost back to the previous one. This is a report of incidents um, against each constituency 2014 versus 2016. Now you see the biggest drop is actually in Birkenhead, but there was a, but there was a higher base to begin with. So what that says when you look at both of those, when you look at both of those slides together in terms of people's perceptions against actual reported incidents, there's a correlation there. Um, and I know that there's an awful lot of action marks here tonight in terms of there's an awful lot of action already being taken place, already taken place, and I've really got nice and late on the agenda to we to discuss it. That's generally the ASP information. Um, <clears throat> what we've got also is we've got an awful lot of really detailed information related to health and well-being. What I've tried to do here is just summarise it for you um, as much as possible. In that, most residents are feeling that health is fairly good. So we've got quite a lot of them actually, though, saying that they've got a long term in, um, condition affecting the day to day activities. Um, what you'll find is that what you probably expect to find is that those people who are socially isolated, they're living alone, but they're social tenants out of work, health is always lower. They're making that they're home. Tying in little bullets on the slide that ties into the rest of the findings, really, in that community safety, crime, and social behaviour are, are the main issues. One of the two most important things about making a good quality of life to see your health, feeling safe is number one. Financial information, financial independence, and a secure job also feature probably, but again, feeling safe is number one. Um, what also came out of this of the survey was. Um, Widow residents as a whole are doing much less exercise on a weekly basis than they should do, um, which again is the credit to our public health colleagues they're working on that more.
back on, on the slide. Yeah, this one or the one before? The one before. Yeah. It's possible, isn't it, when you say the Birkenhead is the biggest drop in, report, in reporting antisocial behaviour is in Birkenhead. Now, we've got a paper on the agenda where the Birkenhead councillors are making a proposal about changes. You could read those figures, couldn't you? That on one of your first slides, it's clearly the big issue. Yeah. That a case is being made for reorganisation there in that people are giving up reporting because they're not getting the service they would like, which is the background for the paper that we're receiving later on, isn't it? Yeah. Well, I, I'm aware well, that... I mean, we don't know that, but we could draw it from that, couldn't we? This is, these are top-level statistics. Sure. In, the, in these, what, you, what you've got is, that I say, go back to this one, what, what we've measured here is perceptions Feelings. Sure. Um, those feelings are, are correlated with, with, with the reporting in that it is that it, I, I think there's, there's definitely a trend where pe people, people in Wirral generally think that dog farm and, and litter is an issue to be tackled. Yeah. Um, across Bear Pet, there's, there's specific spikes on certain issues. Yeah. And I know that, that's absolutely being looked at at the moment. Great. Thank you. Okay? Yep. Um, if I just touch on the economy relatively quickly, because I don't think that there's going to be anything that's going to be news to anybody. In that, um, what is seems very competitive are low and um, higher levels of workers' residents. Widdle South has got the highest level of employment. Um, that's tied into the being more retirees in Widdle West. Um, <coughs> excuse me. The overall workforce, we've got half um, in semi skilled and specialist roles. Um, and a big proportion of residents are third when they in SMEs, organisations with less than 25 employees. Um, we've got six, almost 60% of Widdle residents working with which was sent out, which was a relative surprise to colleagues when I was talking about it. They thought that that figure would be lower than that. Um, but they are in more entry level positions, um, and obviously to be an organisation in, in smaller in smaller organisations as well. Um, and that, can I just ask, is that, is that 58% of rural residents who work work within the borough, or 58% of all residents work? No, that's 58% of all residents who work. Who work? Who work? Yeah, yeah. Finally, this is a bit of a dashboard. Um, now, I said earlier on about about the initial satisfaction metric that um, body tends to do for every local or local government organisation. We do this is effectively asking how whether people are satisfied with with the organisation, with the place as a, with the border as a place to live, and a few other different and a few other different points. What you'll see there. I mean, I won't go through each one line by line. But that will be broadly in line with us everywhere. Um, you've got 80, just under 18 percent of people saying that they are satisfied or very satisfied with the place as a place to live. Um, that's more or less in line with the with the organising with the other areas that I said that we have been benchmarked against. Um, again, in terms of satisfaction with the council, value for money, about advocacy and acting on people's concerns, but also relatively in line with the with the, with the best of with, with the organisations we've been compared against. There's not a huge difference in the tech on any of them, those particular metrics. But I would say, um, if I just move into to sum up, if that's okay. Um, this is a really heavily summarised um, findings. I've tried to personalise it for the, for the constituency. Um, there's a really detailed report that we've just received. Um, we're in the process of, of briefing that at the moment. Um, what that process is, I, I've been able to we'll publish the findings online as well. Um, but we're, we're actually going into it now. So there's an awful lot of really detailed findings. Most of the insight we've drawn actually reinforces the, an awful lot of assumptions about the council's key challenges. It suggests very strongly that the contents of the will plan was meant to pledge as well right. And they were the right areas to focus on. And it gives an awful lot of really robust data and information that are actually based plans on and actually starts to start generating service change and different, different ways of working. Now, the final point that I just wanted to mention is that it's pretty much doing this once and putting it away. We'll be doing this on a regular basis. Um, Molly are advising us that once a year is too much. They, they're advising either once every 18 months or once every two years. If we do it like that, we're going to be doing annual short snapshots to build on this. So this is effectively our baseline. Um, so we'll be measuring against this every year as we go forward. Um, Chair. Kevin, can I thank you for it and also for answering when I called you mum? I've been calling off a lot worse than that. You need to let Great, great.
to know that original sample of 1,200 people, yeah. was that 300 from each of the four constituencies? Yeah, it's more or less, when you look at the numbers, it basically worked out more or less um, representatively to the population of each one. It wasn't completely even. Wallace was 329, uh, Fairhead was 297, Little West was 289, and Little South was 291. So the actual original sample was um, just under 6,000, and that was broken down um, according to the population profile. What we also did when we got this, when we when what, what, what Molly did when they got the initial response, it's weighted according to population profile and demographic factors. So if we were overrepresented in the response in terms of say older people, that was weighted to just for that. Any other points, please? I think one, I, I didn't know the council were doing it. I think it's really innovatory of them. And rather than us shifting our prejudices as your representatives, to actually ask you in a representative sample what the issues are. And you will see as we go on, to, on the agenda, we're actually trying to reflect that in the reshaping of councils um, and community services generally. So, Phil. I, I just wanted to just add to what Kevin said that. The, one, of the one of the many advantages of doing this survey is it does give you a baseline. Um, and if you do future, sur future surveys in future years, you can track your progress yeah. over time. But the other big advantage of, of going with Murray is they do this kind of survey in dozens and dozens of other councils across the country. So you can benchmark your art performance with the kind of best in class. Yeah. And that gives us the, the ability to, to sort of learn from others. Um, you know what they're doing to improve their uh, ratings with their residents, and hopefully we can do the same. So I think it's got it's got lots of potential for you know improving the council. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Yeah. There's also doing it with um, with this yardstick about what the people who pay for the services yeah. think. I think it's brilliant. All right. If there are no other points, can we move on the agenda? Um, and Alan makes a very good point about when we. Going through the agenda about spending money that we can spend, so I'll bear that in mind now. It's all right. I think that's a general feeling of everybody. On item four, um, if we take the antisocial behaviour first, Phil, will you introduce that for us? Okay, so um, we just wanted, and it's obviously relevant because anti so, um, people here? Yeah. Um, it's obviously very relevant to the last item because antisocial behaviour was a key issue in, in Birkenhead more so than the other constituencies. So I think it's timely um, to, to bring uh, a more detailed report back. Um, but I, I just wanted to give, give a, a, a very brief sort of report, if you like, on um, a couple of initiatives that we're uh, working on at the moment to try and uh, bring our ASB um, levels generally down, because I do tell you a point frank, but although statistically the number of reported incidents of four, that may not necessarily mean that there's less of it, so I, I do get that point. But I think there's, there's a couple of things um, that I'd like to mention. Uh, one is, um, in, again, in the, um, in the spirit of, 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 complete, of trying to, to <coughs> come up with a, a, a better model of the way we deliver uh, services and use particularly the funding. Um, for, for a while now, and, and Frank, it, it's been one of your um, key priorities as well, I know, um, to, to, to look at the, the totality of the spend on antisocial behaviour that all of the agencies uh, bring to, to the table and to make sure that we get out of our silos, our organisational silos, and start working more collectively and in more of an integrated way. And therefore, over the last um, couple of months, we, we, we in the council have particularly been working with the police in terms of how can we have one integrated team of, of officers um, with one budget and one command structure under the police, because I think the police are the obvious people to, to lead on this. Um, and you know, in terms of what the council can bring to the, to, to the table, we have, as some people may know, we have an antisocial behaviour team um, of six officers um, and they 
uh, take referrals from the police, but they also take referrals from councillors and the public, and they will, um, you know, help uh, residents um, collect evidence, and produce logs, etc., um, of antisocial behaviour. Obviously, with a view to um, making sure that that behaviour ceases, uh, ceases, or people are are prosecuted by the authorities. Um, so we bring that uh, resource to the table. We've also got a community patrol service of I think about 14 uh, officers just now, and they um, uh, do a whole range of things. They, they uh, uh, look after schools out of hours, and they generate an income from that. Uh, they uh, respond to antisocial behaviour uh, uh, reports in our parks and so on and so forth. So that, that's a potentially uh, quite a, a big resource. We've also been talking with agencies like the Fire Authority, because they have anti-social behaviour, housing associations, etc. Anyway, it's got a long, long story short. Um, after uh, a number of, of meetings with the police, I, I am hopeful that um, by April, we should have that one integrated model with the police uh, managing the totality of all the associated behaviour resources. Uh, so we have police officers, PCSOs, ASP officers, all of the professionals whose job it is to um, bear down on this problem, working in one integrated command structure under the police. And I think uh, if we can achieve that by April, uh, that would be a really good result. And I know Mark, uh, Mark Campbell is, is, is working very hard with our police colleagues on that. I, I've certainly spoken to Jane Kennedy, our Police Commissioner, and she's very much in favour of this, this model. Uh, so, uh, obviously, we'll, we'll keep the constituency committee posted, but as I say, the, the uh, aim uh, as we sit here is to have this model in place by, by April. Uh, so, I think that'll be a real move forward. And the other thing, Frank, if, if you, if, just to, to um, allow me to, to mention, uh, and, and I think it's a, it's a, fa it's a fantastic project. Um, the other big issue around antisocial behaviour is, of course, um, are, are many of our young people who um, hang around the street corners. Now, that in itself is not a crime, but it is, can be intimidating for neighbours. We all know, um, many of us will know young people who claim that there are not things to do, no, no places to go. Well, we, we start, started work before Christmas. We, we did a groundbreaking ceremony um, for a rural youth service which will be a state-of-the-art youth facility um, which will have a whole range of um, both sport and other um, kind of recreation facilities in it which will be open to all young people in the world um, be based next to uh, the fire station in, in Exmouth Street. Um, it's a £6 million public-private partnership. The council put in £2 million of, of capital funding into the project. And there are a network of these youth zones around the northwest. There's a couple that started in London, in London, and they are absolutely fantastic. If you ever get the chance, I recommend you go and see one because they are brilliant. Um, and, and we are the uh, we are the, the next on schedule. So the work started on the rural youth zone um, in December. It will be open. It will be finished by December 2016 and open in January 2017. It'll cost a young person 50p a night to, uh, to get in, and now they'll be able to do everything um, for that 50p, five pounds a year. A pound to get out. <laughs> um, and it's open every, every night of the year, um, weekend. So it, it is a fantastic resource. Now, I, I, I cannot claim any of the credit for this, because Gene Stapleton has been very much the, the person who's championed this. Um, in rural, uh, and you know, we wouldn't we wouldn't be where we are without Jean. So, can, can I just beg your yeah. indulgence and let, let Jean? Sorry, Jean, I didn't ask you beforehand, but could, could you do you want to just talk about youth zones and what will youth zone will, will bring uh, to, the benefits to young people? I think that'd be really helpful. Yeah. Um, yeah. Thank you. 
does trying to describe it, it's just not the same as actually seeing one in action. Um, if you go in and you see the young people having their children in minds, it looks like chaos to an older person like me, but actually it's, it's very well organised and very well supported with staff, very well structured. Um, case histories that we've read um, from young people who um, have had a good deal in life. The support that we give by the uh, the seminar so have actually been able to help that young person to change their lives, um, and they actually go back into school and start achieving things because they gain such confidence by the support they've had in the youth so, so apart from having a wonderful time uh, on all the uh, sporting activities and arts and crafts, <coughs> all sorts of fun activities, they do get supported in many other ways as well. Um, I'd like to think that our youth zone is going to be better than all the rest, but we would say that, wouldn't we? Mm -hmm. um, I really do think so. It's been a long time getting yeah, all the money together and getting it actually started to be fixed. But it's here now, um, and I, I know from talking to everybody too, most people in there now, they're just waiting there with an arm to it. So, um, thank you for all your effort, but you know, I think I've done that much for a while from be thrilled to be asked to go and do things for the youth and I, I absolutely love the whole idea of this and, and I, I, I'd like to put money on this, I'm not a gambler, but I would put money that our anti-social behaviour problems will almost drive away, especially in Birmingham, once this is open. Great, any questions? Yes. yes. Uh, my name is Leonora Brace. I just want to ask uh, two questions if I may please. You say it's going to cost 50 pence an evening. Well, what about the bus fare? Because you'd want to get a bus there, and that's very expensive. And what about the parents who can't afford to pay for this, who are having great difficulties now? How are you going to allow certain children to go, or youth to go, when others can go? So that will cause friction. Right, Jean, two questions there. One is about the 50p and the bus. And what about those who can't pay? Then, do, do you want well, to see well, in, in, terms of, in terms of where we're going with young people, uh, the, uh, the My Fair ticket, which is a £2 return, has been introduced, uh, actually leading the way nationally for young people's travel and trains. We've now got a deal with the train companies. Uh, and I know we are in talks um, with the youth zone whether we can put a package together um, through our sort of late night bus services, which, which probably will be the most popular one, um, and whether we can do a deal with the youth zone and actually introduce a, a youth zone ticket as well around that. So, so clearly, um, you know, we live, we live in a world where you know, there is a small charge for, for, for what we do. Um, if we think, uh, I, I don't know, we changed the car park, so I, I had to go and buy a yeah. pound, yeah. spare a pound for a bar of chocolate, so we got changed for the uh, parking meter outside. So, I think, you know, as a, as a headline figure, 50p is a, is a very attractive figure for, um, for young people. And we are working constantly because what we believe at, at, at Bearsley Travel is if we can get young people on the buses uh, very early in life, that they will stay with the buses and increase. So we have a goal challenge to increase bus patronage by over 10% when it actually nationally it's declining. So, so there's a lot of good stuff going on with youth fairs and we will certainly be open to uh, approaches from the youth zone for special tickets for the week events. Great. Thank you. Any other questions? Yes? Mike with the yes. Sport Development. Um, Birkenhead constituency very kindly are funding Birkenhead Youth Club on a Wednesday and a Friday evening. And on average, 80 youngsters attend those sessions and they're happily paying 50p each to get in. On the other side of the coin, you're also funding a session at the Tennis Centre down in Bidston on a Friday night. Those numbers dropped dramatically when we imposed a charge of £1. It almost fell away to nothing. And it's through the funding of this committee that that's allowed that session to go ahead without the youngsters actually paying. And the numbers are going back up. So it's really very small pockets, this. It's very territorial in everything. So there isn't a blanket answer to this, it's, you know, it's particularly by area. But can I just ask, is um, the 
If they go into the tennis centre at Bidston, it's to play tennis. No. No, it's to do other outdoor, things as well. There's an outdoor football area, right. and it's the football in particular yeah. that's working. But we run a lot of outreach sessions. We try and take activity to the youngsters. And I think the thing here is to try and provide a good range of activities right across the borough for everybody. So, like all of us, we would like to choose our particular thing, and so it is with the youngsters as well. Great. Any other questions on um, the um, youth zone? We've actually had this very positive response from antisocial behaviour, um, both um, with the project, which is actually going to lessen it, we hope, with the youth zone, but also the combined services from the council. Yeah. And I think, Frank, Frank it, it might be worth just mentioning the, um, the, the Birkenhead Improvement District. Um, so the Birkenhead Improvement District was agreed before Christmas, and this is the, uh, this is the initiative whereby businesses uh, in, Bir in central Birkenhead will agree to pay um, an additional uh, charge on their business rate in, in return for um, uh, additional services which they decide what they, what they feel is important. And in, in many other, um, I mean, Liverpool has two bid um, districts, but in many other uh, areas, the businesses have decided they would like to use um, that money, and, and it will be half a million a year additional that will come into Birkenhead. They, they want to use, they, they've chosen to use some of that money to buy additional um, uh, police um, services. So again, that's another another source of funding to um, to add to the, the existing monies to improve the, the service for residents. Can I then put a proposal to you? Because there's that flexibility, but we have got some of our budget left for antisocial behaviour budget. Um, is would you agree that that should go uh, into this combined budget, but making a a, um, a recommendation? that while the businesses might pay for additional activities to counter antisocial behaviour in Grange Road, there might be other areas which are not covered by businesses and that we could actually keep make a recommendation that one actually does initiatives in certain areas to counter. But Ms. Councillor McLaughlin. I just want to ask, um, I was under the impression that there were um, some areas around the constituency that were having resources put into them. I'm particularly thinking of one in my ward in college, Drive and Rockland. I see no mention of it here. Has that project going ahead? Has that resource been put in? What effect has it had before we allocate money to one specific one? I'd like to know whether or not that's um, actually happened or whether the money is still there to have for it to happen. Cool. What you want, I wasn't I saying know. it would only go um, to Grange Road West because the business rate may actually cover that. I was saying that if in fact we put our funds into this combined service, it would be with a recommendation that we might like to say to have special activities for a period of time in our wards. I, I understand what you're saying, Frank. What I'm asking is, is there, is there a pot of money still there to be used on these small projects, or is that the pot of money that you're thinking of using? Yes, it is. But it should go in. Because I, the idea that we somehow, uh, well, our recommendation was for the council to bring <coughs> peace and its antisocial behaviour services together. For us then to say, but we've got a pot of money we're not going to keep. What we're saying is that, what I'm recommending, you can obviously overthrow it, but it is that that, that that pot of money that we've still got for antisocial behaviour should become part of this combined budget, but with the recommendation from us that the police actually pay attention to local councillors when they want special activities in their wards because of hotspots of antisocial behaviour. What's happened to the identified hotspots? That's what I'm asking. You're What's what? happened to the identified hotspots? Well, that we're, that that we're actually recommending the combined service might wish to use the money we have left to actually implement that programme. No, I think what Maureen is saying is that we've actually put some money aside already oh, sorry, for these yeah. hot spots. And I'm hoping that it's not, not the same good. amount of money that's being declared as surplus. That's, that's the point that's I'm trying to get sure, to. No. Yeah. Well, I know we've got to now, thank you. Yeah. The 30k is the remaining money, and um, we, we did identify areas like the park, Rock Ferry, as needing some support. And I know Laura's um, 
already met about ASB issues in Mock Ferry. That's right, isn't it, Laura? Um, I was just saying that the, the, the ASB team have already met in Rock Ferry um, to look at ASB issues. Um, you've, you've already done some work around some of the hotspots that we had identified in the park. And no, it's not bad. Yeah. Perhaps we'll talk later about yeah. it. Yeah. Well, I don't think no, I'm getting the answer. No, it's not. I, actually, I think we should try and get an answer now, Maura. Um, we identified prior at a previous meeting hotspots the councillors wanted specific action on. Now, has action occurred in those areas or not? Rocklands, College Drive. I know there's been police activity down there, but I'm not sure how coordinated it's been. And I know there's a, another action week coming up quite soon uh, across a whole range of activities. But we were asked, as a, across the councillors, um, to identify <coughs> particular areas in our ward that had antisocial behaviour problems. And we, as a council group in Rock Ferry, identified College Drive. Rocklands Road, and that was some time ago now, and if, I know the problems are still uh, ongoing, I just want to know, has any, anything happened there to, to match that request that I have to be taken up? Can we agree um, that we'd actually like to report back immediately as possible uh, to councillors, but actually also um, a paper to our next meeting, and if in fact the hotspots that councillors have identified and wanting action on, uh, there's not been a response to each of them. There are £30,000 left at the goes uh, with the recommendation that, that, they, that, that those priorities are met from our money. Does that agree? Yeah. yeah All right. Yeah. Very good. Um, Chris, can you do us feedback on CCTV visit? On the visit? Yes. They're all 